you make your point, but I want to find which, which particular case were you seeking to serve um, on, the, on the office of the speaker, which was not accepted? Obviously, obviously the interlocutory injunction, and not any expert motion as they seek to say. Uh, when I they see. listen to me very well, uh, uh -huh. when they I listen see. to me very well, okay. and you see, Honorable okay. Ayaga make, the fa uh, to make mention of the fact that... But you are saying you have been served. Yes. Fact that what was he served with? <laughs> Oh, okay. hold on. So, the fact that it is even anticipatory is going into the substantive matter. It does not deny me my right of filing a suit in court so that it will be said. That is number one. Number two, the Honorable Ayariga is saying that when it comes to issues of fundamental rights, as has been um, enshrined under Chapter 5, nobody can, as it were, put, uh, bring it upon himself to ensure or if like enforce fundamental human rights of other persons. Yes. Article 33 talks about, about the fact that when it comes to fundamental human rights, it is the person who has been affected. But also, also, a JM Pofo versus the Attorney General also made mention of the fact that you can also enforce rights or like fundamental human rights of persons by not going to the High Court, but the Supreme Court. That is also a constitutional requirement that you can do so. It does not mean that the fact that it is fundamental human rights, other persons cannot go to the Supreme Court to enforce the constitutional um, rights of such persons. So it is never true that when it comes to fundamental human rights, other persons cannot go to the Supreme Court to enforce those fundamental human rights. A J. Ampof is a classical case that talked about the fact that when it comes to fundamental human rights, other citizens can go to the Supreme Court to enforce fundamental human rights of such person. So it is never true that the four it's members... It's not an open market. Have you read but, the due service attorney general? That's but, where they started. But is, is, it, is it not, not an open, open, open check? Shot. No, Reference. but I'm saying that when the Honorable Ayariga says that you nobody can go to court to enforce fundamental human rights of other persons, and I'm just saying that it is not true because I, as a citizen, can go to court to can go to court to enforce the fundamental human rights of Honorable Hassan Ayariga and lawyer Martin Pebu on the premise that I believe that this is a, uh, an issue of public interest and I will not go to the High Court. I will rather go to the Supreme Court to enforce the fundamental human rights of such persons. That is the point I'm trying to make. Number two, when the Honorable Hassan Ayariga talks about the fact that if an MP is going to Parliament or a Speaker of Parliament is going to Parliament and a Clerk of Parliament is going to Parliament, those persons cannot be served. Please, the issue is not about whether the Speaker of Parliament was, his, was on his way going to Parliament or an MP was going to Parliament. No. The issue has been the directive from the Speaker of Parliament that when you want to serve me, serve the legal department. The legal department and the personnel that works from the legal department does not fall within the catchment area or the category of who a member of parliament is, who a speaker of parliament is, or who a clerk of parliament is. So such persons can be said. And in this particular instance, those persons were not said when they were on their way to parliament. Indeed, they can be said even when they are on their way to parliament because they do not fall within that catchment area. But these persons were said at the legal department. So that is the point I want to make. And lastly, lastly, it is also not the case when Honorable Hassan Ariga says that no one shall or no one can interfere in the proceedings of parliament, it is not the case. The constitution of the Republic of Ghana espouses separation of powers. When it does so, it means that the Supreme Court, when there is a question before it about a procedural breach as far as the workings of parliamentary uh, proceedings is concerned, Regarding issues of interpretation, <laughs> regarding issues of interpretation, the Supreme Court can assume jurisdiction True. and interpret but, the but, Constitution. But in this instance... So that does not amount to interfering in parliamentary proceedings. The Supreme Court has exclusive original jurisdiction when it comes to the interpretation okay. of the Constitution of the Republic well, of Ghana. Uh, lawyer Sevois, did the Speaker interpret Article 97 or as he was clear in his words, it was clear in his words, he saw I do apply. not think, I do not think that the Speaker of Parliament honestly interpreted the constitution of the Republic of Ghana. Why? So we have the Republic versus, hold on, we have the Republic versus Mekankan, where any court, even the lower court, can apply the constitution of the Republic of Ghana when they deem 
the provisions of the constitution very clear and unambiguous but the point we are making is that if the constitution is being applied in a way that will affect fundamental human rights of other persons that will deny representation of persons from these four constitu uh, constituencies then it lies within their rights and other well-meaning Ghanaians to make sure that these um, kind of application of the law that would deny their representation would be dealt with. But if you do not think that the speaker interpreted the constitution, then where lies the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court in this particular case? But the fact that the speaker applied the constitution in his own understanding, if you, if you read his own ruling, of course, he being an experienced lawyer, was was very clear when he said that i am not interpreting the constitution he said so and i will be i will be very honest with that he said that he is just bringing up he's just bringing about his understanding of the constitution that means that he's applying the constitution mm -hmm. which he has that right under republic versus mccain -Kan. but i'm also telling you that when you apply the constitution in such a way that it affects the fundamental human rights of persons it breaches natural justice it brings about some amount of illegality, then you can invoke the supervisory jurisdiction of the Supreme Court. No, but, not supervisory but, jurisdiction here. Yeah. But but the, the, this judicial the, the, review. <laughs> Sorry, but, you, you but, can you can invoke you can invoke the judicial review of the Supreme Court. That is the point I'm trying to make. You can go to the Supreme Court to ask for interpretation. Uh, okay. Don't want my you wanted to because you have to leave us. Yeah, yeah I, I I unfortunately I have to leave you. But I've really made my point. And um, like I said earlier on, there was really no basis for whatever happened yesterday. I believe that the Supreme Court, constituted by those five judges led by the Chief Justice, you know, uh, clearly exceeded their powers in suspending a decision of Parliament that they had not declared as being in violation of any provision of the constitution. The Supreme Court has not said that, you know, the speaker's interpretation is wrong. The, the Supreme Court has not said that. The, the Supreme Court has not said that the speaker's uh, decision to um, uh, conclude that when you file to contest as an independent candidate, when you are a sitting member of parliament on the ticket of a political party, you lose your seat. The Supreme Court has not yet said that that is right or wrong. Are you getting the situation? Mm -hmm. And yet, they interfered with the proper functioning of Parliament by going to suspend that decision. You haven't said the decision is wrong, and yet you have suspended it. On what basis? On the basis of what authority are you doing that? If we allow you to suspend this one, which other decision will you not suspend? So every day we go and sit, we're not sure whether this decision that we have taken today, the Supreme Court will suspend it. Is that how the democracy is supposed to function? And Your power is to declare that we are either wrong or we are right. So if you declare that we are wrong and therefore you are annulling our decision, fine. But to suspend our decision, on what authority are you suspending our decision? If you are in a hurry, you could have just done the interpretation yesterday and given your ruling yesterday. You could have done that yesterday. But... For Parliament, we to meet and take a decision, then you will suspend it. How? How, 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 can, how can that happen? Uh, said, what, what the Supreme Court cannot do in this instance, what you're saying, is to, is to second guess the Speaker by determining whether or not his, his application of the law in terms of the determination of vacancy, whether the Speaker has properly done so or otherwise. So that, that's the fine line we're saying here. No, 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 no. When. The speaker enforces a provision of the constitution by taking a certain action. That is to say that you, you are a sitting member of the MPP mm -hmm. in this house, and you have gone to file as an independent. By my reading of Article 97, 1G and H, you have vacated your seat. So leave this chamber. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. When the speaker does that, the Supreme Court can, when somebody goes to them for a declaration, declare that, Mr. Speaker, you're wrong. Are you getting the point? Mm -hmm. When somebody, you know, a, a certain member of parliament on a political party ticket goes to file as an independent, uh, it doesn't amount to vacating the person's seat. So 
I'm annulling your decision. I'm declaring that your action is null and void. That's the declaration. Mm -hmm. That is not what happened yesterday. What happened yesterday was the Supreme Court hasn't declared that his decision is wrong. Are you getting the point? But has interfered in his work and suspended his decision. And, it is, and I'm saying I, that we are a coordinate arm of government. We are either wrong or we are right. But you have no business interfering in our work. Mm -hmm. And it is the same constitution that establishes your office and then says that you are Supreme Court. That also says that we, too, when we are working, you shouldn't interfere in our work. Yeah. And this is until the determination of the case. So that's indefinite. I, how, how yes, is, is exactly. That, is that regular? Exactly. Is, is it regular to have an ex parte motion run indefinitely until the determination of a particular case? I am even saying that in this instance, the whole idea of an ex parte motion, and etc., is wrong, it's flawed. Because you need to act on the basis of the fact that this is a special situation where we are dealing with the architecture of government, mm -hmm. where you have the Supreme Court, you have the executive, and you have the legislature. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. And then you have clear provisions of the Constitution that says, hey, when the legislature is doing its work, I beg you, don't interfere. If you interfere, it amounts to contempt. Clearly stated. Are you getting the point? Mm -hmm. Clearly stated. I'm saying that under our Constitution, there are only two bodies that the Constitution protects from their work being interfered with. Okay? That is the legislature and the executive. Sorry, the, the judiciary. And there are two bodies that the Constitution gives the power of you know, punishment for contempt. And they include the judiciary and again the legislature. So that protection that the Supreme Court seeks to give to the legislature is a protection that the Supreme Court must respect. The same way that the Supreme Court, the Constitution also gives the judiciary some protection that we also respect, such as the clear provision of the Constitution that when there is a matter that we cannot pass a judgment, we cannot pass a law reversing a judgment of the. The, the judiciary. Is that not it? Yes. It's in the constitution. Yes. So it's a protection given so that the judiciary will not pa take a decision. They will come and sit and say, oh, oh, we, we don't accept this. Let's pass a law that says that what the, 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 the courts have done is wrong. We will not abide by, by it. So, so, so these are protections given under the constitution. And the judiciary must be mindful of those issues. And I'm saying that that whole argument that the business of the house will be disrupted that government cannot do its business, that there will be a crisis in the parliament. It has nothing to do with the Supreme Court. These are political matters. And Baker and Carr is clear that the Supreme Court should not get itself and should not double in political issues. Leave the coordinate branches of government that are political in character to deal with their matters politically. Why? If we go to the House and two or three MPP members of parliament don't show up, we can still disrupt government business by voting against it. We can disrupt government business by voting against it. Will you come and say, oh, because government business was disrupted, there's a violation of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. So these are political matters that the Supreme Court should not be bothered, should not, should not get involved in. That's my, my basic underlying point. That don't allow them to come and frighten you that, oh, eh, and, and there will be chaos in Parliament. Why chaos? It is the rules of the Constitution that are being pro, uh, uh, interpreted. When uh, what's his name? Professor Michael Quay gave the ruling. I feel Michael was in the house. Yeah. Well, well, now they say it's Joe not. Gatti was in the house. Mm -hmm. Listen, Joe Gatti was in the house. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. All those who were making noise, yeah. they were in the house. Politics of convenience. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. They didn't see that there will be chaos. They didn't see that the business of the house being disrupted. I mean, today, all of a sudden, the same provision. The same set of facts, the same application by a speaker, and then all of a sudden there is chaos, there will be confusion. If that confusion occurs, it is going to occur because of what the Supreme Court has done. Are we faced with a constitutional crisis? Why? No, from Tuesday. I am saying from Tuesday. that don't be in a hurry. <laughs> Tuesday is coming. From Tuesday, you see. When Tuesday comes, we will see what will happen. Don't, don't be in a hurry. In the tail of a lion. I'm Tuesday. saying that don't be in a hurry. Tuesday is coming. Tuesday we will see. <laughs> yeah. Mama Yariga is MP for Boko Central.